Hey everybody, welcome to the Trailblazers podcast, well, where we are not actually making a podcast. Uh, today, instead, we are talking about how to plan for a behavioral interview and why is this important. Whether you're a technical worker or a non-technical worker, you're definitely going to have a behavioral interview sometime in that interview process. And, um, you know, you're going to want to rock this. And so this is uh, not going to be the thing that, say, is between you getting this job offer and joining the company. So we need to practice in advance. And then how do we want to plan for it? So first of all is, is we really want to actually understand um, why behavioral interviews exist and why these are used for the companies. So the reason these exist is actually for this reason. Um, basically, the companies utilize these to get an understanding of basically how you're going to act in certain situations and what are your tendencies. And um, the reason why this is important is because, say, once you're in a team working dynamic, they want to have a pretty good understanding of, say, how are you going to cooperate with your teammates? Are you going to basically, like, you know, go and do your own thing? Or are you going to, like, collaborate really well with your teammates? Are you easy to get in arguments and get frustrated? Or are you, like, a logical problem solver? So they actually are asking these questions to get these details from you. So once you have this kind of in your mind, then it can give you a pretty good idea of actually like how and why behavioral questions are quite important. Um, Tyler, what are your, what are your thoughts on this and um, any kind of things that you want to share? Yeah, definitely. So these are, this is a critical interview for a company to do because you can be the smartest person in the world, perfect fit for the job, but if you don't work well with others and you don't integrate well into that environment that the organization has, then you know, you're not really, it's, it's not going to be a good fit for the company. So they're trying to figure out how you'll work in, in these situations. And I'd say one of the big things that um, they're looking for is somebody that covers, that's, that's a big umbrella for covers a lot of these situations is high emotional intelligence. Um, and so when you're prepping for these interviews, uh, you know, we went over in one of our other videos that you want to have examples uh, ready to go from that you can draw and draw on from your experience, kind of serve up as this is what happened. This was the result. We kind of went over that star format in another video. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about actually when you're prepping the examples, the types of examples that you want to pick. And so if you're looking for one that shows maybe high emotional intelligence, uh, you want to have kind of a dynamic example where maybe something didn't go right. Maybe there's some adversity, something like that. And then what you want to do is show that uh, you, you have high levels of sympathy and that you can identify the emotions that other people were feeling, not just you, not how you felt. You want to be able to say that, you know, so-and-so was anxious. This person was stressed. This person was frustrated. This And kind of expand your lexicon for emotional vocabulary to show that you can tap into that. You can recognize that in other people. Um, and then essentially how you reacted to that. So you can sympathize with other people on your team, and then you can kind of come together as a cohesive team and find solutions to that and find the best way forward. And like Dave said, you know, it's not really about going off on your own. It's how does you, how do you work within a team? If, if you're demonstrating, picking examples that demonstrate this emotional intelligence, um, that's also signals high, uh, a high level of ethics, which is important for a company too, because, you know, they're, especially now it's so important to have good ethics within your company culture, right? So if you demonstrate through this, that you're also an ethical person, then that is a bunch of green flags. Um, for the company. So when you're picking examples, um, you know, you don't want to just go through the very technical details of, you know, scenario A led to B, led to C, this was the result and this is what I did. You really want to get into, um, you know, the dynamics of those interpersonal interactions within the team. So when you're focusing and you're prepping your examples, try to do that and then just really make a list of all the interactions that happened, the emotions that went along with that, how you reacted to them, in a positive or negative way, if you felt a negative way, but you reacted in a positive way, these are all really good signs for the company. So really keep that in mind when you're uh, prepping those examples. What, what would you say about that, Dave? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Tyler. Um, and I think what you're pointing out too is kind of this like empathy of emotional intelligence and understanding not just for yourself, but like how that is affecting other people. So having this in the contextual sense of say like any situation is great. And also, like you're mentioning, like the sympathy, like basically not just say like, once again, this internal, but more of like this external and team, because pretty much like most things within any of our jobs are all team related functions. Um, so the next point that I want to talk about is actually on the uh, basically uh, how you organize and how you should deliver your answers to questions is because what the interviews are doing is you got to think about it. 
Uh, it's like Tyler and I talking right now, right? Like Tyler, like imagine if you were actually trying to write everything, like the important bits of my information right now, as I'm telling them to you, like you have to basically be paying like really close attention to the words that I'm using, the situations and understanding all these things. So think about that as from the interviewee's perspective, if I'm the one being interviewed, if I'm basically going on these like long rambling stories and not really being very succinct or not giving the interviewer the types of information that they're looking for, they're actually most likely going to, I, I, I don't know if confuse is the right word, but they're probably just not going to get like the right information they need to get good judgment uh, basically based on your candidacy for the company. Because a lot of times afterwards, these interview reports will go to say like a different manager or a different team and they'll see this too. So what this means for you is something like this, is we talked a little bit about before and Tyler mentioned it uh, earlier in the, our video right now too, is we, we want to use a star format. So situation, task, action, result, right? And then you also want to think about that when you are giving your answers to the interviewer, basically like be quite succinct, like what was the situation? You can literally just like, as you're giving your like one or two minute answer, the situation was this, the task was this, the action was this, the result was this, and then each point like fill in the blanks and give the other information ne that's necessary. And the nice thing is like, I, may maybe you don't exactly have to do it like this, but if you do it along these ways, I think at each point, the interviewer will know exactly like what at a high level they need to write, okay, write this, and then they'll bullet in the rest of the information from that a bucket, right? And so I think like if you can kind of organize your thoughts in a way like this, it's going to help you a lot. And it's probably also going to show another green uh, check on your candidacy. You're well organized. You you understand. You like you know you're giving them the information that they're looking for. You're a good communicator, right? So it's just another kind of like little hack that when you're doing your interview, if you do this, it's going to point like really high uh, you know levels of communication skills for you. Tyler, what what are your thoughts on that? Definitely totally agree with uh, everything you said there. You know, they do have a rubric in front of them that they are trying to fill out and you can understand kind of the, the boxes that they want to check there and hit as many of those by being succinct and not really just kind of rambling on and, you know, being a little bit prepared and just, you know, you can Google this, you can really find out exactly what these interviewers are kind of looking for. And so when you're doing your prep, you put a little bit of effort into trying to check as many of those boxes as you can. Um, I would say one other thing that I would add that's good when you're really, you know, charting out your examples beforehand and thinking about what you want to say in these interviews is demonstrating that you have the ability to take away lessons learned from situations because this is going to s signal another uh, a number of things one is you know critical thinking so you can look back at a situation and kind of be objective about your role in the whole thing and say what went right what went wrong what would i change next time and this is also going to signal uh you know the the you're a humble person and that, you know, there's a lack of ego there. Cause you know, you don't have to say, oh, I did everything perfect. This was a result that went great. You know, you want to be, you want to be a little bit malleable, adaptable, and always a learner. This is going to be a really good investment for a company. If they bring you on and, you know, they invest 10, 20 years into you, then, you know, they, they know you're going to be improving the whole time because you've demonstrated this ability to take away lessons learned. So on top of that star format where you have the result of the situation at the end, I would always tag on a little bit about, you know, this is really what I learned. And if I encountered this situation again, this is how I would do it differently. Or if you're lucky enough to have encountered that situation again, a really good add on example is this happened again, you know, X number of time later, and we actually learned from the last time and we did it differently the next time. So I think that's always a huge green check mark for the company. Um, and so whenever I do interviews, I always try to toss that one in as well. But you know, if you guys build your examples like that and prepare in that fashion, then I don't think you'll have any tr trouble in these behavioral interviews. Anything else you would like to add on Dave? A really quick one, and I think we can summarize after that, is uh, practicing with a friend, a family member before you're going into your interviews. Just even if you go on Google and search up like the top 10 behavioral interview questions, top 100 behavioral interview questions, and just grab a few ones um, in between there. Or if you want to get really particular, you can go and look at, at what's called Amazon Leadership Principles. Maybe we'll make a video on that too and answering some of these Amazon Leadership Principle questions too. Um, but basically just doing some practice questions at the beginning. And then when you're going in the interview, like what you'll notice is like, you're going to be way more confident because a lot of times you're going to get asked like, like a quite similar type of question in the interview. And you might not going to be able to answer it like the exact same, but you're going to be close enough and you'll have the practice that it's going to make you a lot more confident and easier to answer it in the interview. Um, 
So I think that's probably all for today's video. Uh, I hope you guys found some of these tips useful. Let us know if it's gonna be helpful in your interviews and um, hopefully some of these things will help you land your next job. So with that said, we will catch you guys next time. As always, like, subscribe and comment. And if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Peace. Have a good one, folks. See you next time. Okay, I have to copy.